How's it going guys and welcome back to a very exciting new Battlefront 2 video. Now we have a ton of news to get to today. The details regarding the upcoming Scarif update have been revealed and there is a lot there to talk about. We've got some surprises and something rather serious and pretty sad news regarding Battlefront 2 that we're going to have to talk about at the end of the video. Like I said there are a few surprises in here and the update itself looks like it's going to be an absolute banger of an update for the game. But like I said there is something pretty serious lingering all over all of this. If you know what it is then you know, but we'll discuss this towards the end of the video because it is very important. So just make sure that you stick around to the end of the video. Now no messing around, we're just going to dive straight into this. Now about 16 or so hours ago we got a new community transmission sh showcasing Scarif and everything that's going to be included in the upcoming update for Battlefront 2 and a lot of it is probably what we predicted but there are some surprises along the way as well. So the first thing we're going to discuss in this video is Age of Rebellion Supremacy. So Scarif, Hoth, the second Death Star, Tatooine and Yavin 4 will all be coming to Supremacy. And on top of that, all of those planets will be getting added to instant action. So there's a little bit here for both online and offline players when it comes to the original trilogy. So this is going to offer a really good spread of content for Supremacy and you know leave the game full mode in terms of errors and the maps that we can play on. And given what's to come for Battlefront 2, that's going to be very very important indeed. We're all going to need that, we all have to play some online multiplayer and yeah, the game is going to need it. Now also Scarif will be getting added to Cop, which is pretty good news to hear and also the MC85 Star Cruiser and Resurgent Class Star Destroyer will also be getting added to Cop as well. So this is going to add just a little bit more variety to Cop. I know a lot of people really do love that mode, myself included. It's you know, it's simple, it's against a lot of bots but you know the bots are actually pretty competent. So this should keep Cop fresh for at least a little while. Now there are also some changes to Instant Action. It's getting its name changed to Instant Action Missions and it's gonna, it's also going to get some changes to the way it's going to play. So that's a positive change there for the people who play offline and rely on Instant Action for that. Now also moving on we're going to be getting the Crate Heroes vs Villains map which has been floating around for a very long time and it's finally coming to Battlefront 2. It says here that Heroes as Villains will be receiving a new planet in April as the battle between Dark and Light reaches the salty mineral planet of Crate. This is one of our most requested Heroes as Villains locations to date, so it's really exciting to bring it to the game mode. The combat area will be focused inside the main hangar with the blast doors open letting in the sunset outside. So it's not going to be in that back area, it's going to be in that really visually quite cool area. So I'm pretty happy with that, but it will be quite open so that's definitely going to play interesting. But like I said, I'm pretty happy about it. So many people have wanted the Crate Heroes as Villains map that has just seemingly been forgotten about for so long. But you know, it's finally here so that's going to keep the pretty healthy map rotation for Heroes as Villains pretty fresh. As the game mode overall it does have a lot of maps so I imagine it's going to be the go to mode for a lot of people. Now also we will be getting new trooper appearances for Scarif. Now some of this is pretty much what we expected, as it says here within this update we are pleased to confirm that troopers will have a new appearance based on the shore trooper setup. Members of the Empire will have their shore trooper appearance while the Rebellion will have access to their Pathfinder variants. Now this is news that I definitely did expect to see. The shore troopers were awesome in Battlefront 2015 and have a great look that's going to be a fine addition to Battlefront 2 in my collection and the, Re and the Rebel Pathfinder it's definitely going to help add that extra immersion to Scarif by having the Rebels in the right attire. So that was all expected stuff, but you know it's actually good to have it confirmed nevertheless. Now we also have four new hero skins, which is something that most of the community predicted to happen. Out of these four new hero skins, I predicted and said in my content that Star's Battlefront 2 needs in 2020 video about three months ago, that we need to receive three out of the four of these appearances by the end of the year. You can go check out that video if you haven't already, because I go in depth about what we need to keep the game alive. Although if you know what about um, what about I'm getting into at the end of this video, then there's really no point. <laughs> we knew we had two villain ones on the way, and they are the two that people have been speculating on. So we of course have Star Wars Rebels Darth Maul with the robot robotic legs confirmed. This is perhaps the most requested hero skin in over the past two years, and it looks pretty good from the images that we've seen so far. Now we're also getting three new skins from the Rise of Skywalker. The first one being Palpatine's red robed Sith Eternal appearance. So when he's fully restored in the Rise of Skywalker and he's rocking that red look. That's what we're going to be getting and the second is for Rey. We have the Jedi Master or Rey Skywalker appearance with the yellow or golden lightsaber. Something that a lot, I mean a lot of people wanted from when the film was released. 
Now we also have the option to put a hood up to complete the appearance and this option also complies with the original Jedi appearance that came with the launch of the film as we saw her constantly have her hood on with the blue lightsaber. And the final skin that we've gotten is a hooded skin for Kylo Ren. Now this one's the more basic of the four new skins from what I can tell so it is what it is but it's an extra villain skin never nevertheless. So I guess that's a positive even if it's nothing crazy. So I'm extremely happy with the four new skins. The more Rey and Palpatine ones, I'm loving the look so far, but I'm really happy with these hero skins overall. Now there is also a ton of changes to the UI and the general gameplay. Now I won't go over all of them in this video or it will take all day and I don't want to bore you guys with the smaller, more boring stuff. So I'll put a link to the patch notes down in the description of this video if you do want to read up on all that stuff. Overall this update looks very good. I'm happy with what we've got. Nothing has really blown me away, and you know they tend to throw in some big surprises here and there, and some for sure, but nothing too crazy. Nevertheless, it is looking like a really huge update that's going to be adding a lot to the game, and given what we're about to discuss, that's going to be very, very important. Now a shift of tone for the video. This video is about to get pretty rude. A lot of us have been speculating that this would be the last update for Battlefront 2, and a lot of people have been saying the complete opposite, myself included. For some of us it looks like we were right, because Battlefront 2's live service has officially come to an end as of the Scarif update. So the update tomorrow will be the last update for Battlefront 2 and this is pretty devastating in all honesty. Now when I watched the community update video, the voiceover from Dennis Branville hinted at the game coming to an end so naturally that just that this just sent everybody into an absolute frenzy. So we actually got some clarity and yes, this is the end for Battlefront 2. Jesus, I'm almost crying somehow. So this is pretty gutting to be honest, but Battlefront 2 has come so far and it seems like the live service has ended when the game still had so much more potential. And it just sucks man. Like Battlefront 2 really did come so far over its journey and it seems like it's just been cut off before it could really reach what it was truly capable of. This could mean they're making a Battlefront 3 and want to keep some of the potential content that we could have had for Battlefront 2 to help market the game. I don't know. I really hope that's the case because it's probably the best case scenario. I mean there is no current live server Star Wars game and that just really confuses me seeing as Battlefront 2 and Star Wars games in general had just had some of the biggest months yet. Like the highs that this game saw over the past few months has just been crazy. But it's just, it's all come to an end and you know it's prematurely if you ask me. Now I wouldn't be surprised if the virus had something to do with all this. But yeah, just this just, this sucks guys. But the update itself looks amazing and you know I can't wait for it, but it, 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 but it is overshadowed by the fact that Battlefront 2 is basically coming to an end. It sucks, but I mean like what can we do? Now the update does go live tomorrow and the servers will stay up and we will have events and whatnot, but as for content that is it for Battlefront 2. I don't know where this leaves me as a content creator here on YouTube, I'll obviously no matter what keep on making videos and Star Wars things and projects and other videos, especially Battlefront 2 still if I can. But my channel was built from the grind up with EA and DICE in Battlefront 2015, Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017, and you know I've been here every step of the way. And as someone with a lot riding on this game, you know that does suck, but you know as a fan of the Battlefront franchise in general and just a member of this and the Star Wars community, it's just, it's just a sad day really. This game just had so much untapped potential in it, and like I said before, I hope this is coming to an end so they can market a Battlefront 3 for next gen consoles. Like, that literally might just be the best case scenario. Now guys, go ahead and let me know down in the comments what you think about this, apart from the bad news. This is a pretty good update. A pretty huge one, and it looks really good, and you know I can't wait for it. But you know, it's no doubt overshadowed by the bad news, let's be real. This kind of sucks, guys. Now, if you did go on to enjoy this video, and you do want to see more like, more like it, then make sure you force push that like button, and subscribe to the channel if you are new to join the Kenobi crew and to be enrolled in the TK Jedi Order because we are very close to 300 subscribers. But that's going to do it for me today so make sure to keep an eye out on the channel for a live stream and video tomorrow or today depending on when this video goes live when the update drops. And as always, may the force be with you. Always.